Chapter 3 Living Organisms and Their Surroundings Everywhere around us, on the floor, roof and walls, on tables, clothes and even on our skin, we can find innumerable, minute and microscopic living organisms. Some of these are visible while some are invisible to the naked eyes. Indeed, life is all around us. So, what are some things that all life forms have in common? Characteristics of living things Living things have some features or characteristics which make them distinct and different from non-living things. Learn about these here. All living things need food. Living things need food to grow, survive and stay healthy. Plants are the primary producers of food on earth. They produce food through the process of photosynthesis and are known as autotrophs. Animals depend on plants for food and they are called heterotrophs. 2. Living things grow. Living things start their lives as smaller infant-like creatures. Over a period of time, they grow and develop into adults. Some animals, such as butterflies and frogs, start their life in a completely different form and then change largely as they grow. A butterfly starts its life as a caterpillar before maturing into a full-grown beautiful butterfly. A frog begins its life as a tadpole and then turns into an adult frog. 3. Living things breathe or respire. All living things respire to obtain energy from food. Respiration is the process through which food is broken down to obtain energy from it. Most organisms need oxygen for respiration. Human beings and other animals get oxygen through breathing. They breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants also respire. During the day, they carry out photosynthesis along with respiration. But at night only, respiration takes place and plants give out carbon dioxide. 4. Living things move. When we know something, such as a ball, is about to fly past and might hit us if we don't move, we duck or move away to stay safe. Through the day, we might move to avoid danger, to walk, run, play, eat and perform various other activities. Just like us, most living organisms can move. They might move to find food, to find shelter or to avoid danger. Though plants do not move from their place, but different parts of plants show movement. For example, roots grow downwards and shoot grows upwards. Many plants move their stems to face the sun. Some carnivorous plants move to trap prey. 5. Living things respond to a stimulus. The term stimulus can be defined as any change in an organism's environment that makes the organism react. How an organism reacts to a stimulus that brings a change in behavior is known as the response. For example, as soon as our hand touches something hot, we move it away immediately. The fact that the leaves of a mimosa plant close as soon as we touch them shows that plants also respond to stimuli. Animals can respond to stimuli in two ways, learned behavior or in a way that they have learned. For example, how we learn to read and talk or how a mother bear teaches her cubs to fish, instinct or in a way that they were born just knowing how to do something. For example, the natural instinct that make animals run away from danger, how animals find or make themselves a shelter or find food and water. 6. Living things reproduce. A very important part of the life of living things is the ability to reproduce or produce young ones of their own kind. This process is known as reproduction. By reproducing, living things are able to pass on their characteristics to another generation. Plants reproduce through seeds. Some plants reproduce through their stem cuttings. Mammals such as humans, cows, elephants, sheep and lions give birth to young ones. Birds Insects and fish lay eggs from which babies hatch out. 7. Living things excrete. All living organisms produce waste products in the body. Much waste comes from food. The rest is produced by movement, 
growth and other life processes if this waste remained inside the body of an organism it would cause serious illness thus living things must have a way to dispose of waste excretion is the process that removes waste products from the body of a living organism eight living things die living things have a cycle of life they are born they grow up become old and die the period of time that a living thing is expected to live is called its life span different life forms different needs living things have many big and small needs plants need sunlight air water and other nutrients to make food through the process of photosynthesis birds need twigs to build nests fish need water to live and humans need air water food clothes and shelter living things depend on their environment to fulfill these needs different life forms have different needs however all life forms do have a few of the same basic needs in common almost all living things need food for energy or growth water oxygen and space some basic needs energy all life forms need energy to survive energy is what allows organisms to do things living things use energy for varied activities such as to protect themselves and to move around in search of food water shelter and other needs the sun is the main source of energy on earth sun's energy is absorbed by the autotrophs to make food and then passed on from one organism to another in the food chain food we know that different animals have different food habits the food provides them with energy it also provides them with the essential nutrients they need to build up their bodies to grow and repair damage water living things need water to survive water in our blood helps transport food and nutrients to the different body parts it helps remove waste products from the body plants use water in the process of photosynthesis to create their own food they use water to grow and to make and transport food oxygen most life forms use oxygen as the main component in many of the essential processes needed for life different organisms have different methods of acquiring oxygen from their environment many land animals breathe oxygen directly from the air while most aquatic animals use the oxygen dissolved in the water to survive space all of the essential needs mentioned above are obtained by organisms from their environment or the space around them the amount of resources found in a region is often limited like there might be only a certain amount of food and water available so living things need enough space to support them without interfering with the lives of other living things too many living things packed in a small living space would lead to a major scarcity of resource ecosystem habitat and adaptation an ecosystem is a group of plants animals and smaller organisms that live feed reproduce and interact in the same area every organism has a unique ecosystem within which it lives this is its natural habitat this is where the basic needs of the organism to survive are met we have learned that plants and animals need to adapt to their habitat to be able to survive an adaptation is a change in the organism's body a special feature or behavior that helps it to survive in its habitat how plants and animals adapt an animal may adapt to its habitat in different ways the limbs of birds are modified into wings and the shape of a cheetah's body is appropriate for running at a fast speed an african elephant lives in a hot habitat and has very large ears that it flaps to keep cool while a polar bear lives in a cold habitat and has thick fur to keep warm The gills that fish have enabled them to breathe in water. The frog has web feet to help it swim quickly. Animals camouflage themselves to adapt to their environment. For example, insects can change their color to blend into the surroundings. 
This makes it difficult for predators to hunt them. Animals living in the snow-covered areas of harsh cold climate have learned to adapt to the weather by storing food in their body and keeping warm with the help of the warm fur that cover their body. In aquatic plants, stems are soft and can bend easily with flow of water. They rise up towards the surface so that the leaves can get sunlight. In cold climates, the tree leaves are thin and pointed so the snow doesn't accumulate on them. In cacti, leaves are modified into spines to prevent loss of water and to protect their green stems from animals. The trunk of a saguaro cactus allows it to take in and store a great deal of water when water is available.